One of the first economic models that you'll learn about is a production possibility curve, sometimes called a production possibility frontier. And what it shows is the various combinations of two products that a given country can produce or what a given company can produce. So what I've got here is a company, let's say that it's Apple Computers. Let's say that they just produce two things, iPods and computers. Now they might make a thousand different things, but we don't need to see every little detail about the company to understand what's going on. We just pretend that they just make two products, otherwise it, the numbers would just be too complicated and we really wouldn't be able to learn much from it. So this is just sort of like an economic model or an economic map. So I've got the two products iPods here, which I've called product X, computers here, which I've called product Y. Let's say that in a given hour, this is what they can produce. In an hour, they could produce 20 computers and no iPods, if they're as efficient as possible. Or, if they decide they want to produce some iPods, let's say five, then they have to give up the opportunity to produce computers. So, as we produce more of one product, we're producing less of the other. So this really just shows opportunity cost. If we take these numbers and then plot them on an x and a y axis, we get something that would look like this. I've put iPods on the x axis since that was our x product, computers on the y axis since that was our y product, and we get a line that looks like this. So the line that we've created shows the different possibilities of what we can make. This shows the maximum that we can produce. That means if we're as efficient as possible, we can produce any one of these points on the line. But if we go from A to B or B to C or from any two points, there is going to be an opportunity cost or there's a trade-off of what we can produce as we saw in the previous numbers. Let me add in another point. Let me call it point G. And let's say that at point G, this is where they're producing, let's say, a combination of, let's say, seven iPods and seven computers. They could produce at point G. They wouldn't want to because they're not making as much as possible. Only points A to F are is what is the maximum that they are capable of producing. This point G is called the underemployment of resources. They're not making as much as possible. Let me add another point outside here. Let's put it way outside. Let's call it point H. Let's say that this is when they're producing a combination of 25 and 20 clearly not possible at this current moment because it's not within this production possibility curve. They could produce there in the future if they got new resources or better technology or maybe if there was some sort of trade involved. Um, also, other key points, point A, where they're producing no iPods but 20 computers, at that point they'd be specializing in making computers because they're only making that one product. Point F over here, if they're making 25 iPods and nothing else, that would be specialization in the production of iPods. Let's look at one other thing that they might ask you on the AP test, which is opportunity cost. They might ask you a question like, what's the opportunity cost if we go from point C uh, to point D? Well, opportunity cost is what you give up. So here they were making a combination of 10 iPods, 13 computers. Here at point D, they're making more iPods, but they're making fewer computers. So the opportunity cost, opportunity cost, remember, is what you give up or the next best decision. The opportunity cost of going from C to D would be that they lose out on the production of five computers. They were producing 13 computers. Now they're only producing eight. So the opportunity cost is what we give up going from one point to another. So going from C to D, the opportunity cost would be five computers. What about if we went from E to D instead. What would be the opportunity cost? Well, we were producing 20 iPods. Now we're only producing 15. So what is the opportunity cost of going from E to D? It would be five iPods. That's what we give up going from E to D.